Let's now work through an example to demonstrate how we go about analyzing circuits involving the, the uh, bipolar transistors. So we have this circuit here. The collector is tied through a resistor R sub C to a 10 volt source. The base is tied directly to a 4 volt source and the emitter is lifted up off of ground by this 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. We're told that the beta is going to be equal to 100 and we can assume that a base to emitter voltage if it's conducting, it's going to be 7 tenths of a volt. So with that, let's go ahead and calculate all the voltages and currents we possibly can in here. What do we know? Well, we know the voltage here is 4 volts. We know the voltage here then is going to be 7 tenths of a volt less because VBE is 0.7 volts. So V sub E, we can calculate right off. V sub E is just equal to V sub B minus VBE, or V sub E is going to equal 4 minus 0.7, which equals 3.3 volts. 3.3 volts there, 0 volts there. We can calculate I sub E. I sub E then is going to equal 3.3 volts divided by the 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. That then equals 1 milliamp. Now, we know that I sub E is equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B, so we can calculate I sub B then is equal to um, I sub E divided by beta plus 1, which is equal to 1 milliamp, divided by beta is 100, plus 1 is 101. 101. 1 milliamp divided by 101 gives us I sub B equaling um, 0 0.0099 milliamps. Now, we know that I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B, or 100 times 0 0.0099 milliamps, and that's going to give us 0 0.99 milliamps, slightly less than the 1 milliamp at the emitter. Now, we know I sub C. We can calculate V sub C, which is going to be just a 10 volts minus the voltage drop across that resistor, or V sub C is equal to 10 minus I sub C times R sub C, or 10 minus I sub C is uh, 0.99 milliamps times the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, gives us then that V sub C is equal to 5.3 volts. With those calculations and now knowing what both V sub B is and what V sub C is, we're in a position to verify whether our, or to test whether our original assumption that we were in the active region was correct. So we assumed that we were in the active region, which meant that I sub C and I sub B were related to each other by this beta term. We've gone through and done the calculations under the assumption that we're in the active region. Now, are we there? We've got V sub C here then being 5.3 volts, 4 volts here. If we've got this PN junction like that, 5.3 volts here, 4, 4 volts there. In fact, that PN junction is reverse biased, and we're in the active region because the forward bias here, the reverse bias there. And the calculations that we done, have done are valid. Now, let's read these, do these same calculations only instead of it being 4 volts here at the base, let's change it to 6 volts at the base. What's that going to do? Raising the base voltage to a higher voltage is going to make it so that the emitter voltage, which is still going to be 7 tenths of a volt less than the base, the emitter voltage is going to be higher also. So we're going to have a larger voltage across this emitter resistor, so we're going to have an emitter current that is larger. The base current then is going to be larger. The collector current is going to be larger. With a larger collector current multiplying this or running through this resistor, the voltage then at the collector is going to be less than what it was. So we're going to go ahead and analyze this circuit, once again assuming that it's in the active region. But we have our suspicions, or at least we see that something may be different under these circumstances, but we won't know until we calculate the new collector voltage and then check to see whether this base to collector PN junction is still reverse biased or if it is in fact now forward biased, which if it is, would be in the saturation region. 
So we're going to assume active region and go from there. So V sub B now is equal to 6 volts. So V sub E is equal to 6 minus 0 0.7, which is then going to be 5.3 volts instead of the 3.3 volts before. I sub E is going to equal then the 5.3 volts being dropped across the 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. And we have then I sub E is equal to 1.6 milliamps compared to the 1 milliamp in our previous example. I sub B is just I sub E divided by beta plus 1, or 1.6 divided by beta plus 1 is 101. And that gives us then 0 0.0158 milliamps compared to I sub B before that. I sub C is beta times I sub B, or 100 times 0 0.0158, that's equal to 1.58 milliamps compared to 0.99 milliamps with the previous example. V sub C now is going to equal 10 minus 1.58 milliamps times the 4.7 kilo ohms, and that gives us now V sub C equaling 2.57 volts. Now we can test our assumption. Are we in the active region? Is this PN junction still reverse biased? Or now that V sub C is significantly lower than it was and V sub B is greater, will it be forward biased? Well, instead of it being 5.3 volts, V sub C now is 2.57 volts. 2.57 volts here, 6 volts here. In fact, we can see that this PN junction would have uh, forward biased itself it would have become would have become forward biased long before we got to this condition so no the transistor is not acting in the active region it's actually in the saturation region which changes our calculations now no longer is i sub c equal to this beta of 100 times i sub b and in fact under saturated conditions, we're going to assume then that this voltage is going to be two-tenths of a volt. So what do we know? We know that we still have seven-tenths of a volt drop across here. So V sub E is still going to equal the 5.3 volts that we had before. V sub C, the voltage of the collector, will be the voltage of the emitter plus, and that's supposed to be a 0.2 volt drop for VCE sat, the collector voltage is going to be two-tenths of a voltage greater than the emitter voltage, or 5.3 plus VCE sat of 0.2, V sub C now is equal to 5.5 volts. Notice the 5.5 volts is probably, not probably, is definitely a better calculation. At 5.5 volts, and this now is 6 volts, we've got a plus to minus half a volt drop across the base to a collector junction. As we mentioned before, this thing is going to saturate and before we get to a full seven-tenths of a volt here, and we're seeing it here, that it, there's only about a, a five-tenths of a volt drop from the base to the collector before the uh, transistor uh, saturated. Now, I sub B. I sub B is no longer equal to, or I sub C here is no longer equal to beta times I sub B. Can we calculate I sub C? Let's get I sub C first. I sub C then is going to be the current through that resistor, which we can calculate. It's going to be the 10 volts minus the 5.5. So 10 minus 5.5 is the voltage across the resistor divided by the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor gives us an I sub C of 0.96 milliamps. Now, how can we calculate I sub B? Well, we know under all circumstances that I sub E is equal to I sub C plus I sub B. Therefore, I sub B can be calculated by taking I sub E and subtracting from it I sub C. Or I sub B is going to equal I sub E, which we found to be 1.6 milliamps, 
minus I sub C, which was 0.96 milliamps, gives us a calculation of, or gives us a value of I sub B equaling 0.64 milliamps. To recap, the transistor is saturated because the voltage of the collector is less than the voltage of the base, thus both PN junctions are forward biased. Under saturated conditions, the voltage across from the collector to the emitter is 2 tenths of a volt. We can calculate the currents there. We can calculate the current I sub B from this calculation. The final thing that we need to do then is calculate the forced beta. Beta sub F is equal to I sub C divided by I sub B under saturated conditions. We have I sub C of 0.96 divided by I sub B of 0.64, and we get then that the forced beta is equal to approximately 1.5, significantly less than the active beta.